evening, one. Good evening, all. Welcome to our for, uh, formal session, and I'm going to call the meeting to order. And I'm going to ask uh, the invocation, Rabbi Israel Zoberman from Temple Liv Tekva. Welcome, my friend. Well, thank you for inviting me. Dear Mayor Dyer and City Council members, our loving God who brings us together to be one loving family, gloriously diverse and gratefully united through the divine commandments of loving kindness. Let us give thanks to the Most High for blessing us with the most precious gift of life, allowing us to glimpse the wonder of God's creation at our captivating Virginia Beach, caring for its glowing shows the irreplaceable message of freedom and responsibility around the world. Grant, O oh God, our civic leaders, the conviction, courage, and compassion to lead us from strength to strength, that we may always be that shining city on the beach, blessing all who enter its golden gates. May we together turn hatred into love, war into peace, division into vision, pain into promise, darkness into light and blemishes into blessings, with shaloms, holy healing, hope and harmony for all of God's children. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. And if I may uh, offer a moment of silence for those who have paid the ultimate price to protect our country and our city. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, do we have a roll call? Yes, Your Honor, all present. Okay, I'm gonna ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the formal and formal sessions of April 18th, 2023, the special formal, formal session of April 19th, 2023, the formal session of April 25th, 2023, and the special formal session on April 25th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Second. Okay. The vote is open. All righty. By vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the minutes as submitted. Okay, uh, a point of pride that we have as a city council are to uh, have proclamations and resolutions to honor extraordinary people in our city. Our first uh, proclamation is Bike Month. Walter Camp and Amy Frostick, will you come up here and bring that group of young folks with you? And I asked council member uh, Jennifer Rouse if she would be so kind to do the honors. Yes. Welcome. We got quite a group here, Mayor. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Uh, welcome oh, we can to do each rows. of you. I think I see some folks from JNA Racing out there. There we go. Boy, what a good group. We've been doing community engagement. And that's too. why we're one of our he the healthiest cities in the country, right? Here we go. All right, Mr. Mayor, with uh, Walter Camp and Amy Frostick, I'd like to welcome from District 10, looking at you, colleague from District 1, from District 10, the Lanstown Middle School Bike Club. Um, I want to shout out the Lanstown Middle School Bike Club and their principal, Dr. Mark Makovec, for supporting this unique initiative that's one of its kind in Virginia. Also, shout out to the VBEPD bike unit who supports them in their training and their safety efforts. So congratulations to y'all. Okay, so the proclamation, whereas National Bike Month was established in 1956 and is a chance to showcase the many benefits of bicycling and encourage more folks to give biking a try, and whereas 50 years ago in 1972, the young city of Virginia Beach established its first committee to explore the creation of safe bicycling routes for its residents and visitors. And whereas, whether you bike to work or school, ride to save money or time, pump those pedals to preserve your health or environment, or simply to explore Virginia Beach, National Bike Month is an opportunity to celebrate the unique power of the bicycle and the many reasons we ride. 
And whereas the month of May is recognized as Bike Month, and May 19th is recognized as Bike to Work Day, and whereas throughout the month of May, National Bike Month, the residents and visitors of Virginia Beach will experience the joys of bicycling through educational programs, community events, or by simply getting out and going for a ride, and whereas motorists should always be mindful of vulnerable road users, including bicyclists, and whereas the following will help you enjoy biking more. Have your bike checked over by a qualified bicycling shop. Always wear a helmet to protect your head in the event of a crash. If not on a multi-use trail, ride in the right most lane that goes in the direction that you are traveling. Obey all stop signs, traffic lights, and line markings. Look before you change lanes or signal a turn. Indicate your intention and then act. Be visible and predictable at all times. Now, therefore, I, Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, do hereby proclaim May 2023 Bike Month in Virginia Beach, and I encourage all citizens to celebrate National Bike Month and bike to work or try cycling for fun, fitness, or transportation, and all motorists to drive with care for the safety of bicyclists. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the official seal of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, to be affixed this second day of May, 2023, Robert N. Bobby Dyer, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate yes. it. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, thank you. What an outstanding group. Walter and Amy, please make some comments. Well, thank you all for having us tonight and acknowledging um, Bike Month. It's very important, I think, for the city of Virginia Beach to have a healthy, safe place to live. And um, I think Bike Month is just uh, providing it for everybody. And we encourage everybody on May 19th, if you can, to please bike to work if um, it allows or just bike a little bit. Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, members of council, Mr. City Manager, thank you so much for this opportunity, the recognition afforded to the school program and to our officers who bike and to everyone who's out there biking. It is our number one activity as you've seen from the surveys, and we are just so pleased at the recognition. Thank you for your support. And for Amy, who's been our colleague on this committee, she'll be rotating off at the end of June, and just wanted to recognize her for seven years of service in this endeavor and to the city. Thank you so much, Amy, my partner, and thank you, City Council. And you folks help make Virginia Beach the great city that it is. And I look at the young folks out there, the future is indeed bright. Thank you. Can we get a picture really quickly, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, sure. See, it is a long walk, isn't it, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me, folks. Thank you. She did it faster than you. Oh, no. Bye. Outstanding. <laughs> Good stuff. And what we're doing to take it away. Uh, we should hear a call. So, Lance, now middle. What do you like? The bike. Bike. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Hey, thank you. Oh, there we go. Okay, our next proclamation is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and is Dr. Joyce Harvey in the audience? Welcome. Thank you. And on behalf of our council, Council Member Michael Berlucci will read the resolution. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for preparing this um, proclamation to recognize May as Mental um, Health Awareness Month in the city of Virginia Beach. It's a very important topic, and I hope that this resolution will bring awareness to both the need for improved access as well as reduction in stigma. So whereas 
Mental health is, a, is vital to every individual's overall health and well-being, and whereas all individuals face challenges at some point in life that can impact their mental health, and whereas mental illness can affect people of all ages, races, ethnicities, and income levels in Virginia Beach, and whereas feelings of personal shame and fears of social stigma and discrimination prevent many, li prevent many living with mental illness from seeking help, and whereas untreated mental illness leads to higher rates of emergency department visits, hospitalizations, incarcerations, school dropouts, and suicides, and whereas having safe, stable, and healthy home conditions set the foundation for achieving and maintaining good mental health, and whereas the mental health of every citizen is essential to the emotional and economic prosperity of our families, neighborhoods, and businesses, and whereas mental health conditions are treatable with early intervention individuals can recover um, to lead full productive lives, and whereas greater public awareness about mental wellness can positively transform attitudes about and towards people with mental illness, making it easier for our citizens to seek help, and whereas each business, school, government agency, and healthcare provider, organization, and citizens share the responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. Therefore, Mayor Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, hereby proclaims May 2023 um, as Mental Health Awareness Month in the City of Virginia Beach. And I will be happy to present this. Thank you, Michael. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Harvey, could you please make a comment? Thank you. On behalf of the Virginia Beach Community Services Board, I accept this proclamation with great gratitude. This proclamation of Mental Health Awareness Month says to us that you are keenly aware of the upsurging mental health crises that we are experiencing here in Virginia as well as other parts of the country. We are grateful of your continued support of the work that the Community Services Board performs. We are grateful. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. Uh, next order of business is a resolution and recognition of Alfred Jake Jaycox. Jake, can you come on down? Jake, welcome. Thank you. Vice Mayor Wilson will have the honor of acknowledging you. And it's definitely an honor, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Whereas Alfred Miller Jake Jaycox Jr. has devoted his life to public service and public safety, as a body, we recognize his tireless commitment and applaud his dedication. And whereas, starting on the a at the age of 19, he served the Virginia Beach F Police Department for over 38 <clears throat> years. You don't look old enough. Uh, his assignments included precinct desk clerk, police officer, detective sergeant, lieutenant captain, deputy chief, and most notably, the chief of police. And whereas Chief Jaycox served as a member of the city's leadership team and as a past chair of the citywide safe community team, Jake implemented department core values, ethics training, a leadership development program for SORN and civilian members, college educational requirements for SWORN promotions, CompStat, less lethal technology, the crisis intervention team, autism awareness training, and established the bomb squad. He also deployed AEDs in patrol vehicles and individual issued tourniquets, both of which have saved lives. In 2006, Jake was the first recipient of the Virginia Crime Prevention Association Law Enforcement Executive Award. And whereas, concurrent to Jake's career in law enforcement, he served on the United States Naval Reserve. He was commissioned in 1987 and served 20 years earning the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal and retiring at the rank of commander. And whereas in addition to earning the Master of Public Administration, Jake continued his education through programs such as Southern Police Institute Administrative Officers Course, the Senior Management Institute for Police, University of Richmond, Police Executive Leadership School, the FBI National Executive Institute, the Naval Postgraduate Schools 
Homeland Security Executive Leadership Program. This has taken a while. So. I've had a lot of reading today. <laughs> and the International Programs for Leadership in Counterterrorism and Leadership of Hampton Roads. And whereas Jake's devotion to our city did not cease at the end of a shift, he has served in leadership roles on many civic groups such as Leadership Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach 4-H Livestock Show and Sa Sales Steering Committee, Sugar Plum Bakery, and the Pungo Strawberry Festival. He is the current president of the Virginia Beach Police Foundation. And whereas Jake also served as the Commonwealth of Virginia's Criminal Justice Services Board and in leadership roles, including the second vice president of the major cities chiefs association, the executive boards of both the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police and the International Association of Chiefs of Police and as president of the Hampton Roads Chiefs Association. And whereas well, well after retirement, Jake has continued to, do, to donate his time and expertise to our city. He served on the Citizens of Review Panel Task Force from May 2021 to September 2021 to review the issue of civilian oversight and make recommendations to City Council, and along with other members contributed to the required policies and procedures in the Independent Citizens Review Board. And whereas Jake was selected to serve as the Independent Review Citizen Review Board interview panel and was selected by the members of the panel to serve as chair. Together, the panel reviewed over 50 applicants to verify qualifications and eligibility to proceed with interviews. As chair, he led the panel to making recommendations to city council for the first 14 appointments of citizens reflecting the city's demographics. And whereas on this day, we honor a public servant who deserves our deepest gratitude and respect for all that has, he has accomplished and contributed to the city of Virginia Beach and to all Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Virginia Beach City Council pause on its deliberations to express its appreciation to Alfred Miller Jake J. Cox, Jr., for his outstanding contributions and his long-lasting legacy to our police department and our city. Adopted by the Council of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, the second day of May, 2023. And we present this resolution duly signed by each member of the Virginia Beach City Council. Thank you. Jake, if you could say a few words while Rosemary's on the way down. Well, thank you all very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, members of council. Uh, this, uh, quite honestly, was uh, totally unnecessary, but very much appreciated. Um, all I've tried to do since the age of 19, when I began my service to the city of Virginia Beach, is to make a positive difference for both the residents and the visitors of our city uh, and help Virginia Beach continue to be the wonderful place that it is to live, work, play, raise a family and retire. Um, it's it's a, been a privilege and an honor and uh, I hope to have other opportunities to continue to serve uh, as time moves forward. Thank you all very, very much. And thank you, Jake. And it So on behalf of a grateful city, Jake, we really appreciate you. Thank you. Is there somebody want to take a picture? Much. Yeah. You can come closer if you want. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you, Jake. Thank you. Okay. Outstanding. 
It's always nice to honor honorable folks that do so much for our great city. Okay, at this point, Mr. we're gonna Mayor. move folks. Okay, yes, Mark. Mr. Mayor, I know that uh, you uh, skipped over the certification of the closed session because council did not oh, okay. actually convene in the closed session. However, since you passed a recorded motion to allow you to okay. convene, I would recommend that you nonetheless do the okay. certification because it will still be true because you didn't discuss. Yes, we, we did turn into it. Yes, we yeah. did. Okay, so, could I have a move. motion to approve the uh, closed session? Move to approve the certification of the closed session. Do we have a second? Okay, thank you, Mark. The vote is open. Um, Councilmember Ross Hammond, thank you. By vote of 11 to 0, you certify the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. And thank okay, you. we'll now move on to the public hearing for the ordinance to amend the city code 10-1.1. Ray, add the council area library's location for absentee voting in person. We have two speakers, Susan Potter is the first speaker and Mike Hashemi is the second speaker. Welcome. Welcome, thank you. Mr. Mayor, real quick, if I could ask the speaker. Ma'am, you've put some miles on that map over the past two months. My kid is last. Oh, well, you, you've done a good job with it. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm in favor of restoring a Kempsville early voting site at the Kempsville Library. Because it took two years to solve this problem, I'd like to discuss how we got to this point. Kempsville had an early voting site in the 2020 election at the Kempsville Treasurer's Office in the Fairfield Shopping Center. It was extremely popular. Lines were huge all the way down the entire length of the shopping center. But the Treasurer's Office was too small. Serious efforts should have been made to find a larger site like the Kempsville Library or the Kempsville Rec Center nearby. Instead, we were told just before the 2021 election that the Kempsville Treasurer's Office would be torn down by October 2021. That turned out not to be true. In both 2021 and 2022, we were told that another Kempsville early voting site would be found. Unfortunately, that promise was not kept. Now, here we are in 2023, and we are finally learning that the library can be used for early voting. This common sense solution should have been implemented long ago. Please take a look at the map of our 10 districts. This is my show and tell. Each of these districts represents 10% of the population of Virginia Beach. Some districts are quite large and obviously sparsely populated. District 2 is half the geography of Virginia Beach, but only 10% of the city's population. Its early voting site is Building 14 at the Municipal Center and has all 45 days of early voting. District 5 with Oceana, District 8 with Broad Bay and Lynn Haven, as well as District 6 with Fort Story and First Landing State Park are geographically larger and less densely populated than Kempsill. Until now, we had four early voting sites open for the last two weeks of early voting. SeaTac to the east, which serves Districts 5 and 6, about 20% of the population. Bayside Rec Center to the north, which serves District 9 and part of District 4. And in one single district, District 8, with 10% of the population, we had two of the four early voting sites. Cent Central Library, which is uniquely situated, uh, central location that serves parts of Districts 8, 4, 3, and 10, and Great Neck Rec Center to the north. So we have Central, North, North, East. What's missing? West, the Kempsville area. There are three districts, District 1, District 7, and part of District 3 in the Kempsville area. These districts are geographically smaller and more densely populated than the others. Kempsville has about 25% of the population of the city of Virginia Beach. The city had four satellite early voting sites, yet for the last two years we had none in Kempsville to serve about a quarter of the population. I'm grateful that this problem will soon be corrected. I want to thank the hardworking election staff and the librarians, and especially the council members who worked to solve this problem. In the future, my suggestion is any changes in the satellite sites should be based on objective factors like population density and the actual numbers of voters served. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mike Hashemi. Maybe pronouncing that wrong. Yeah. 
Welcome. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I would just like to piggyback on what she was just saying. I was actually a um, volunteer for uh, one of the candidates on 2020 and at the Kinsville location for many of the early voting days. And there was a very long line. And so the last two years, not having the access for the people and the citizens of, of Kinsville, I think has been a shame, to be honest, that we haven't, like she said, um, it took this long to find another alternate location. Um, I do support the new Kinsville location, and I hope that SeaTac will stay on as well. That's all I have. Thank hey, you. Hey, thanks a bunch for coming. That's all, yes. Speaker, sir. Sorry. Uh, I'd like to speak. Mr. Holcomb, I, I too agree with this uh, satellite voting district, or uh, this satellite voting site. It, it's not in District 1, but it will serve the citizens of District 1 very well because it is surrounding District 1. And I, I think this is a gap that we have had in the early voting. And I'm glad that I could push the initiative to get this through in any way and make sure that we, uh, we get this satellite voting location. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Anyone else? Okay, at this point, uh, is there any uh, speakers signed up? No, sir. For any item? No, sir. Okay, uh, we can go with the can, uh, consent agenda and uh, Madam Vice uh, Mayor, I understand we have a couple add-ons. We, we, we do, Mr. Mayor, and what I'd like to do is make a, a motion to approve these to be added to our agenda. One is an ordinance confirming the declaration of a local emergency due to severe thunderstorms and tornado on April 30th, 2023. I'd like to make a motion for that. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. And right, we do the vote on it. Any other discussion? Okay. We're voting on that item to add to add the. I'm sorry. One second. No, we're okay. The vote is open. Councilmember Vice Mayor Wilson, may I have your vote, please? Thank you. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have added this ordinance. And, the and that, will, that will be number 8, by the way. Uh, the other one is an ordinance to authorize the city manager to transfer vacancy savings for the FY 2022-23 operating budget is necessary to cover expenditures related to the tornado on April 30th, 2023. I move for approval. Okay, so do we have a second? second? Second. Okay, Mr. Taylor, any other discussion? Okay, vote is open. Yes. I have a vote of 11 to 0. This ordinance has been added to the agenda. And that okay. will be number 9. And if he could be so kind to read the consent agenda. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, number one is an ordinance to authorize the acquisition of the agricultural land preservation ARP easement from Morris Neck Farms LLC. The, the issuance of the city of its contract obligations in the maximum principal amount of $1,305,349 and to transfer funds to purchase U.S. Treasury strips. Number two is a resolution to authorize the city manager to execute an agreement with localities of Region 5 re pursue grant funding from the Virginia Opioids Abatement Authority requested by City Council. Number three is the ordinance to accept and appropriate $18,500 from the Virginia Department of Social Services to the Adult Protective Services Program and the Department of Human Services Ray purchase of technology and materials resources and staff training to improve the adult protective services program. Number four is the ordinance to accept and appropriate $12,631 from the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services to the Child and Youth Program in the Department of Human Services for the support of the child's mental health initiative. Number five is the ordinance to accept and appropriate a $2,000 grant from the Virginia Department of Behavioral Health and Development Services to the Department of Human Services Ray Peer uh, rec Recognition Event. Number six is the ordinance to transfer $410,970 from General Fund Reserve 
for contingencies to FY 2022-23 Office of Voter Registration and Elections Operating Budget Refund the June primary elections. Number seven is the ordinance to transfer $204,179 for the police department budget to capital project number 100 regard of various buildings, rehabilitation, and renewal phase four, raid construction of a ballistics room. And then number eight will be the ordinance confirming the declaration of a local emergency due to severe thunderstorms and tornadoes on April 30th, 2023. And the last one is the ordinance to authorize the city manager to transfer vacancy savings within the FY 2022-23 operating budget as necessary to cover expenditures related to the tornado on April 30th, 2023. Move for approval. We have a second. Okay, any discussion? Vote is open. Give us just a second, please. The vote is open. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay, do we have any appointments? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I think I burned my keep today. Yeah. <laughs> Question. The Active Transportation Advisory Committee to appoint George Alcaraz for the Planning Commission uh, ex officio. <clears throat> Parks and Recreation Commission to appoint Debbie Wig uh, Wiggins, District 4. <coughs> One second. <clears throat> and the Planning Commission to appoint Catherine Byler, District 4. Uh, <coughs> appoint City Council liaisons for the PPA Planning Advisory Team. Princess Anne High School Council Members Shulman and Rouse, Bayside High School Vice Mayor Wilson and Council Member Holcomb, Biddy F. Williams Elementary School and Bayside Six Council Members Ross Hammond and Taylor. Move to approve. Okay, motion to approve. The vote is open. <coughs> by a vote of 11 to 0, you have appointed as those as read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay, at this point, is there any unfinished business? Any new business? Okay, we are adjourned into, uh, uh, adjourned into open mic. Mayor, will you